Recently, I've got an HP Pavilion Gaming Desktop to review for you guys. Before starting with the video, I wanna say thanks to HP for sending me this gaming PC to review. We are going to cover a lot of features of this gaming PC on this video, like specifications, benchmarks, and a lot of stuff by the end of this video. So if you want to buy a gaming PC similar to this one, or you want to buy the same exact model, I recommend you watching the whole video. Now the first thing out of the box that surprised me was how small this gaming PC is. It's actually really small and can fit in any desk and I actually like the design of it. Some people hate the design and some people love it, there's not in between but I think it's pretty nice. The second thing to mention is that on the box came with the power supply cable, the gaming PC, a mouse and a keyboard. Of course the mouse and the keyboard are not gaming, these are office options but it's a nice feature to have if you don't have a mouse or a keyboard and you're saving money to buy one. So that's something to keep in mind. Then I decided to open it up to see the components. For the GPU it has the GTX 1650 Super, for the processor it has the i5 11400, for the storage it came with a 250 6 gigabytes of SSD and for the RAM it has 8 gigs of RAM actually a dual channel and that's something nice because usually probably companies put only one SD of RAM which is a terrible mistake and you're losing on performance if it has only one SD of RAM. The total price for this PC is $750 and it's on sale right now, it's usually $800 but right now you can get it at $750 and that's something to keep in mind if you want to buy this gaming PC and I don't know what's going to happen on Black Friday, maybe we get another $50 discount but we don't know and this is the offer that we have right now. Now if there is one upgrade that I would do to this gaming PC, it will be the storage. If you have more money to spend, I would definitely upgrade the storage with 1TB of far drive if you are working on a tight budget but if you can afford one terabyte of SSD of course is going to be better. You can do this from the website just by clicking on customize and buy, going to the primary storage section if you're going to buy SSD or to the secondary storage section to buy one terabyte of hard drive. Another upgrade that I would do that will give you a better performance will be 16 gigs of RAM on memory but if you can't afford it don't worry you can do these upgrades later on when you get more money. And I recommend you buying the storage before buying the RAM because if you want to download a lot of games 256 gigs of SSD is not going to be enough for you. Now I was really concerned about the airflow before this gaming PC got home because at the end it's a closed box with a stock CPU cooler so I didn't have much expectations for the temperatures and I expected to be kinda noisy but you will see the benchmarks at the end of the video and you will judge. But it's way better than I expected. One thing I forgot to mention is that the RAM it's at 3200MHz and it was listed at 2900MHz so that's around a 300MHz boost from what it was listed. Now let's talk about bloatware. I've heard this gaming PC had a lot of bloatware but the only thing I end up uninstalling was the McAfee antivirus which was the main program that was using my CPU. Other than that I didn't uninstall the HP bloatware. But the main thing is the antivirus so if you uninstall the antivirus believe me that you are going to get some extra FPS. It also comes with the Omen control center but it wasn't really helpful for this HP pavilion because I thought that you could change the color from green to purple because you can see the pavilion with a purple light on the menu but I couldn't do it I could only change the animations to the green one and after that you have an option where you see the temperatures for the gaming PC and another one that it says a network boost that I didn't try but I'm going to try for my benchmark test. Also one thing that I have to say is that it says Windows 11 home and it didn't come with Windows 11 but that's because around 2 months ago where Windows 11 wasn't out yet so you will probably get Windows 11 instead of Windows 10 as I did. And before going to the benchmarks I'm going to give you the perfect upgrades and the total price if you want to make this PC even better. Which I think is pretty good for the value, $750 for a gaming PC that will deliver good performance as you are going to see on the benchmarks, so I think it's a really good price for this type of PC. The only downside is that it's not so upgradable in the future because if you want to swap components to another case you won't be able to swap the motherboard and the power supply so you will have to buy a new motherboard, power supply and a new case. That's the only downside but if you are not going to do those upgrades or you will take out the easy components like the GPU, RAM and CPU then it's going to be just fine. So if you want to make this PC even better at a thousand dollars of a budget you have to swap the memory to 16 gigs of RAM, the primary storage to one terabyte of SSD on their website link down below in the description and lastly change the power supply to a 500 watts power supply. The total price will be a thousand and twenty dollars if you do this upgrade and you can of course upgrade the GPU to a 1660 super or to a 3060 but the price difference is going to be much bigger so I think these upgrades are going to be 
perfect if you want to do a massive upgrade to this PC to make it better. If you are working with a tight budget, like I said before, just upgrade the storage with 1TB of hard drive and 16 gigs of RAM if you can and the total price will be $900 and if you don't end up upgrading the RAM, it will be $798. And now for the last part, let's go with the benchmark for the games. So the first game I tested was Valorant in competitive settings and it ran as I expected. It runs at about 200 FPS at all times with temperatures for the CPU of 70 degrees Celsius average which which is pretty decent and temperatures for the GPU at 60 degrees Celsius average so you will have no problem at all if you buy this PC to play Valorant and if you end up upgrading the RAM expect a better performance. The next game I tested was GTA 5 high settings and it maintained above 120 FPS average in the first part of the game and if you want to see me driving around Los Santos you should wait until my video about benchmarks which is going to have much more information about FPS average but you can expect to run GTA 5 at above 80 the FPS average in high settings on the CD and that's pretty good for a $750 gaming PC and also the CPU and GPU were pretty cool 60 degrees Celsius for the CPU and 70 degrees Celsius for the GPU. I forgot to mention but I didn't do any overclocking to the CPU, GPU or anything this is a straight out of the box so you can expect this FPS right away when you buy it you don't need to do any overclocking. The next game is Fortnite Battle Royale Pro settings this means that the distance view is at ultra and everything else set on low. While I was looting, this game PC managed to average above 300 FPS and when I was battling it managed to average above 200 FPS with an average of 70 degrees Celsius for both GPU and CPU so that's pretty decent and it's totally playable if you want to buy this gaming PC to play Fortnite it's way more than playable and you can buy a 144 hertz monitor and if you end up upgrading the RAM to 16 gigs where you get more performance you will be able to run this game at above 240 FPS consistently so you can buy a 240 hertz monitor as well for this type of esports titles. For the next game it was Warzone and this is a high demanding shooter game so I didn't expect this PC to run it at above 144 FPS average of course and I tested this game on low settings. But the performance was pretty good and it was totally playable with a 75Hz monitor because it managed to average 80 FPS on the whole test and in some cases it went up to 110 FPS so that's something pretty good and the only bad thing that I've noticed about Warzone is that temperatures went up by 10 degrees Celsius for both the GPU and CPU. Other than that, I think it's totally playable if you play at low settings. You can expect a better performance as well with 16 gigs of RAM making this game more consistent but I didn't have lag issues whatsoever so totally playable for Warzone with a 75Hz monitor so it was pretty good. And the last game I tested was Red Dead Redemption 2 everything set to high and remember that every benchmark was made while I was recording so you can expect a little bit more performance out of the PC without recording and Red Dead Redemption 2 everything set to high it managed to average above 30 FPS and keep in mind that you can optimize the settings, setting some of them on medium and other to high to get at least 50 FPS average but everything on high at the start of the game it was above 30 FPS average so it was a console type of experience but since it's not an esports title I wasn't expecting more than 60 FPS average so I'm pretty happy with the results for this gaming PC in every single game and I thought temperatures were going to be a lot worse but they were actually pretty decent. So my my conclusion for this gaming PC is that you should buy it if you have a budget between $700 to $900. I think it's worth the price and as you can see it was really good for gaming and I think it's crazy value for the money that you're paying. Remember that you have the link to this exact model and other gaming PCs as well if your budget is not on this video down below in the description. But if you want to see my top Preble gaming PCs of the month of November you can watch my video about it in the top right of the screen. Thank you guys for watching. If if you enjoyed please leave a like and subscribe but most importantly hit the bell button to see those benchmarks and to see more videos on my channel. Thank you for the support and I will see you on the next one.